It's James Lapton for Pro Boxing Fans. Delighted to be joined today on Zoom with Joshua Franco, new WBA regular world champion. Joshua, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? We're doing fantastic. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, first of all, how does it feel to be a world champion? It's a great feeling, uh, you know, to finally become world champion. I, I dreamed about it since, since I uh, since I started boxing as a kid, since, you know, I envisioned it. So, you know, to be to be world champion, it's a great feeling. Absolutely, I can imagine. Uh, before we get on to the fight, let's talk about the build-up. Obviously, a whole new experience with the bubble, with all the, pan the global pandemic that's been going on. What was that like to experience the bubble? And what can you tell us happened in behind the scenes? Yeah, it was different. You know, uh, I had never done anything like that before. Where it was different to everybody. And, you know, you get tested every day in the bubble. You're you're all on one floor. You can't leave the floor unless, you know, security escorts you somewhere. And, you know, it was, it was just different, you know, not having my family around, you know, not having, not being able to spend time with them before the fight. And, you know, right, uh, right when you test, they take you to your room and you can't come out to the next day. So, you know, it, it was really different with, you know, with all that, with all that stuff going on. You mentioned you couldn't see your family before you went out to fight and things like that. Do you have any sort of superstitions or pre-fight rituals that you would normally do that you couldn't do this time around? Yeah, usually, you know, I'm, I'm spending time with my family before the fight. We're all eating together and stuff. So it was it was really different. It was just me and my dad, when, you know, we had dinner together. So it was, it was a little different. But, you know, I had time to myself to, you know, think about the fight and play it out in my head. You know, I had to get myself focused. So, you know, in the end, you know, it, it all worked out well. How was it to perform with no fans in attendance? Uh, you know, I didn't really pay any attention to, you know, all of all of that stuff. You know, I was just so in the zone. I was so focused on the fight. And, you know, none of that, you know, really, really uh, got my attention. Now, it, according to the bookmakers, it was an upset. Um, a lot of boxing fans and media did pitch you on social media. I did see a lot of people backing yourself to beat Andrew Maloney. Um, Talk to me about, first of all, the, the clear confidence that Golden Boy Promotions had in you to put you on a top-ranked show. Yeah, you know, they, have, they had all the confidence in me, you know, going up, going up against, you know, Andrew Maloney. You know, my uh, Robert Garcia had asked for, you know, the Chocolatito fight, uh, to fight Carlos, Carlos Cuadras, you know, to fight any of the champions. So, you know, Golden Boy was really, really confident, you know, uh, taking me into the fight with, against a top-ranked fighter. What's it like? Obviously, you are one of the uh, lockdown upsets, let's call it. Um, obviously, a lot of fighters, you've got to be staying ready, but you've not had all the facilities available during lockdown and the pandemic. What did you do to make sure you're still so sharp and still so fight ready? Uh, you know, I was still running, still um, getting my miles in, so uh, doing a heavy bag. I have a heavy bag in my in my garage, so, you know, I was hitting that. And, you know, uh, after a couple of weeks have passed by, I uh, got put my training conditioning coach over here from San Antonio. and. We started working at the track, started doing different things. So, you know, I, I was staying busy. Over here in the UK, we've only just been allowed to have sparring start again. In America, what was the sparring situation like? Oh, you know, I had great sparring when I got to Riverside. You know, Robert already had a lot of different sparring partners coming in and, you know, set up for, you know, different times. So, you know, I, I had really good sparring. I was sparring with Ronnie Reels, with uh, Louis Coria, with Hector Valdez Jr., with, uh, you know, uh, Gabriel Murataya. You know, I just had, you know, great, great, great work. And how long before the fight did you have sparring for? Was it the same length of time you normally would have for a normal fight? Oh, uh, yeah, it was about the same. You know, I had about six six to five weeks of sparring. I can't remember, but, you know, I, I still had, you know, a, a quite a quite a while to, to do some sparring. And, you know, right away I was doing eight rounds, you know, from the beginning. And, you know, Robert moved it up, you know, ever, ever since then. So, you know, I, I had great work. Let's talk about your opponent on the night, Andrew Maloney. Obviously, he flew in from Australia. Um, showed the heart of a champion, you know, two perforated eardrums, I believe a broken nose and a cut, and he still stuck it out till the final bell. How, mu how much props do you give him for sticking it out? You know, he, uh, he has a hell of, hell of a heart for, you know, the, the game. You know, he could have e easily just, you know, quit. And, but, you know, he, he, he decided, you know, to, you know, let his balls drop. And, you know, he still, you know, fought and, you know, gave me a tough fight. You know, that was that was the toughest fight of my career. Did you know that he was injured at any point throughout the fight? Uh, I saw when you know he was getting a little busted up. He started bleeding. That's when I you know know that he was really hurting. And you know, uh, when I would hit him to the body, sometimes he would be making you know little noises like if my my thoughts were hurting him. So I knew little by little I was you know getting to him. 
And when you realize that you're breaking them down, you hear those noises or you see the um, visuals of the effects that your, your style is having on him, do you then attack that area? Do you still stay calm and collected and pick him off gradually? Yeah, you know, you got to stay calm. Uh, there's no point in, you know, getting excited and, you know, wasting a lot of energy, you know, you waste a lot of energy doing that. So, you know, I, I learned, you know, how to, how to, you know, remain calm, be poised throughout all of that stuff. And, you know, it just, it, I think it comes with experience. And how does it feel to be a world champion for San Antonio? I know they've got uh, Mario Berrios. He was the first world champ for about 25 years. So how proud are you? Yeah, I'm really proud. Uh, there's not, there's not many there's not many champions that come out of San Antonio. There's very few, and to be one of those few, it, it's a it's a great feeling. You know, it's it's history for the city, and you know, for myself as well. And what's the support like over there for yourself in San Antonio? Getting a lot of support. A lot of a lot of people support me now. You know, uh, before before this fight, I didn't. You know, people didn't really watch me as much, and you know, I, I feel like after this fight, people they they're starting to realize that you know. I'm, I'm what I talk about and, you know, that I'm, I, I am the fighter that I say I am. So, you know, I'm getting a lot of support now and, and it feels great. One thing I wanted to ask you was, obviously, you now hold the WBA regular world title. They also have the super and they have the interim as well below that. What are your thoughts on those titles? You know, a lot of people don't like the fact there are so many world titles per division. Yeah. What are your personal thoughts? Obviously, as a holder of the regular title, I'm sure you're proud and pleased to be a, the regular world champion. Obviously, you want to go for the super, but do you? Is there any sort of tar any tarnish on the fact that it's a regular, not super, for yourself? Uh, yeah, just a little bit. You know, um, it, like you said, it is a, a, it's considered a world title, but you know, of course, I want to be known. You know, to have you know the super, or even you know the, an IBF world title or the WBC. Those are those are my goals. You know, to to unify. You know, against Latito for his belt or against you know Gael Estrada against Ancajas in any of those guys you know so uh yeah I mean it feels good to have a world title but you know I want the other ones as well absolutely um you mentioned a few names here the final thing I wanted to move on to was have you got any targets in mind of course I don't want to jump in too fast you know let you enjoy your time as you'll win and things like that but what are your targets next are you looking at your bitch and their unifications you know, the Maloney rematch would appeal to a lot of people as well after your 12-round fight. Yeah, um, well, there is a rematch clause with me and Maloney. You know, he had one of the rematch clause before the fight. So, you know, we'll see what happens with that. I know that he has to recover from, you know, the fight that we had. So, I'm, I'm not sure how long that's going to take and, you know, how long I have to defend the belt. But, you know, I, I'm up for anything. I'm up to unify against Chocolatito if he wants to do that or, you know, fight against Ancajas for his IBF, unify with him or, you know, even Gaio Serrada, you know, any, any of those fights, any of the big fights I'm ready for. There's a lot of talk about Chocolatito fighting Estrada. Um, if that were to be made again, how do you see that playing out? Uh, that's a really good fight, but I, I give Chocolatito the edge just because he has that fire back. You know, he's been active. He looked good against Jafai in his last fight. And I just feel like he, he's motivated again, you know, especially with the, with the world title that he got. So. No, I give I give Charles Hito the edge just because you know he's active and you know he he's been you know more more recent more in more recent fights. You mentioned Kalia Fai there, obviously being our audience, the UK audience. You've got Kalia Fai, you've also got Charlie Edwards and Sunny Edwards as well in a division. You know mm -hmm. they be potential targets for yourself. I mean, your Fai and Charlie Edwards certainly have been at that world title level. Are they on your radar at all? Yeah, of course. You know, I know that they're one. You know, Charlie Edwards, Edwards was a champion at one at one uh, one twelve. So, you know, of course, you know those guys are on my radar. I, I've you know sparred against um, Yafai with you know a few times in the ring. So you know we shared the ring together. We have respect for each other. You know, he's he's a he's a good guy, good friend of mine. And you know, and any of you know any of the top fighters that you know that want to fight, I, I'm I'm down to fight any of them. You say you sparred Yafai and you're friends of Yafai. Do you feel after his loss with Chocolatito, can he still get back to the top of the division? Or do you feel he's done at the weight? Oh, uh, I mean, you know, I, I feel like, you know, he's he still looks stronger at 115. Uh, I just feel like um, it just wasn't his night that, that night. And, you know, like Chocolatito, look, he came back from, you know, a, a devastating knockout. He, you know, he's looking even better now. Your fight could do the same thing. Absolutely. Well, Joshua, that's all I wanted to ask you today, but I really appreciate your time and joining us. 
And again, congratulations on the win and hopefully see you back out soon. Thank you. And thank you for the support. Thank you for your time. And uh, we'll talk soon. Absolutely. Joshua, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.